I'm like, ah, oh, Keith's in China. I wonder how this is going. So the email says, hey, got tricked into a tourist trap scam, kind of, and held prisoner in the back room of some sketchy club, but escaped. <laughs> Hey YouTube, this is day three, Tuesday here in Shanghai. It's still Monday, back over in New York, and I skipped over something that happened my first night here, Saturday night. At first, I wasn't even really sure whether I wanted to talk about this on YouTube. Um, I I'm, was and still kind of am embarrassed that after knowing about this scam, I still allowed myself to get into this situation. Uh, but I did get out of it, and I think it's an interesting enough story, and maybe it'll help someone else out there, prevent them from getting into the same situation. So, without further ado, here's the story of what happened to me on my first night in Shanghai. And rather than just me telling it by myself, I think I'd rather talk about it with somebody else. So I'm going to cut to the future, cut to two weeks from now when I'm back in New York, and welcome back to the KP Watershed channel, my good friend, Two States Mike, who will be here to talk through this Shanghai scam story with me. Mike? Thank you, KP, and uh, welcome to the Two States Nation. Uh, how long were you in China? Two weeks? Two weeks, yeah, 15 days. So there are a lot of stories, but there's one in particular that we decided we wanted to dedicate an entire episode to. Um, there's no getting around it, and, yeah. Yeah, and so I wanted to set this up for both the KP Watershed and Two States audiences um, by reading the only information that I, as of this moment, have about this incident. Oh. And that was... <laughs> I know what this is. A couple weeks ago, I was at a wedding in Utah, of all places. Not crazy about Utah. We can talk about that another time. Anyway. Good Tuesday's uh, topic. I'm at the wedding. We're at the party. I check my phone, and I see an email from your Yahoo address, uh, and the headline says, Hey, dude, it's Keith. So I open it up. I'm like, oh, Keith's in China. I wonder how this is going. So the email says, Hey. Gmail is blocked in China. That's why I'm using this email. Only 12 hours in China so far, and I already have a pretty crazy story to tell on the podcast when I get home. Got tricked into a tourist trap scam, kind of, and held prisoner in the back room of some sketchy club, but escaped. I had read about this scam online before coming here, so it was dumb of me to have gotten into the situation in the first place. I got hit a few times. I'm reading this at a wedding in Utah. I'm kind of freaking out but when I read that sentence. I was freaked out, too. I got hit a few times. I can imagine, but not too bad, and I guess it worked out okay in the end. On the other hand, I guess it could have ended worse than it did Talking my way out of the back room after about 90 minutes of being held captive and then escaping felt very Tyrion lannister -y as it was happening. It did, yeah. I, Talk I to you that. in a couple weeks. So, I, you know, I uh, I appreciate the Game of Thrones reference at the end there, but... But it was, this was serious shit, Keith, stuff. what happened? Yeah. What happened? So... It's it, set. I mean, so this will tell be, me. Set this up. All right. I think that was a good intro. Really, no spoilers there because you can see in the video. I'm still here. I'm still alive. I still have all my arms and legs, thankfully. Um, but it was an adventure, maybe more of a misadventure. Um, and you know, I was I was so shaken the night that this happened. I couldn't even record telling the story that night if I had wanted to. Um, so I think this style, this interview podcast style, will be the right format for it. This will be the very first time that I'm telling anybody the full story. Um, and yeah, I guess before we get into the story, let me set the stage, right? So my flight from New York to China had taken off Friday afternoon around 4 p.m. And when you fly from the USA to China, you go into the future. So it was about a 15-hour flight. <laughs> And it was extra long because there was that typhoon going on. Then after getting through customs and then a long taxi ride through all the traffic in Shanghai, 
Um, I got to the hotel a little after 9 o'clock p.m. in the local Shanghai time. So Saturday night, Shanghai time, which for my body clock time and back here in the U.S. was 9 a.m. Saturday. Right? So you're so you're all kinds of fucked up by the time you land in Shanghai. Yeah, I was a mess. And like, actually, you know, for those who are watching the YouTube version of this story, that's exactly how I feel right now, too, because my flight back just landed less than uh, less than 12 hours ago. I, I probably underestimated the extent to which the time zone change and the, the long, long flight was going to affect me. So the way I look right now, the way I feel right now, just kind of you know, ragged and, you know, exhausted and got a lot of different chemicals flowing, a lot of caffeine, some alcohol, just, you know, mixed and matched. And um, I I had slept through most of the flight to China. So when I got to the hotel, I really was not tired. I didn't need to sleep. Um, I was hungry. I hadn't really eaten. So I explored the hotel a little bit. Couldn't find any food that looked good there. Go across the street and get some dinner. And, you know, as I'm starting to check out this area where the hotel was located, it, I wouldn't say it looked like New York, but it kind of functionally seemed like if you combined Times Square and Wall Street into one small, you know, three, four, five square mile radius, um, that's what this area of, of, the Huangpu part of Shanghai, I think it essentially is. There's a lot going on there. Okay. It's very upscale. This is where, you know, people fly in to have their business meetings. And, you know, this is where, you know, all the ritzy tours of the city start from. And I think, Keith, like one of the things we were saying before we started recording, like one of the challenges here, like I've never been to Asia. And one of the challenges is like trying to put it in a perspective that like somebody like me uh, who hasn't traveled that much can like relate to, but we're really talking about like places that are very, very different from the American cities that we're used to. Right. Yeah. I, I couldn't, we don't have enough time to list all the differences. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Huge adjustment culturally with the, with the letters on street signs and just, you know, little etiquette things. It's just such a total, um, you know, shock to your system to have to take all this in all at once, especially for the first time. I feel like I could do it better going back now a second time but you know when it's all new it's 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 a lot to take in um so with that being the case i really wanted a coffee you know again my body still felt like it was saturday morning which it was in new york so i decided to leave the hotel um you know and go check out east nanjing road a bit more and i knew ahead of time that if you are a you know single white guy in this area of shanghai you will get approached. And, you know, I should be fair here to China. You know, this, I think, only really happens in Shanghai and really only in the very, very touristy, hotel-heavy, you know, richer parts of Shanghai. It doesn't, it didn't happen to me anywhere else in any of the other, any of the other uh, Chinese cities that I visited. And although... And you can get approached in in cities in America for all different sorts yes, of reasons. But yeah, exactly. I, I get... I get what you're saying. I don't think anyone's accusing, you know, you experience this, you know? Yeah. There's, but this... We, we, we just want to hear the story. And, and you know? you're right that this does exist in other cities, but this does seem like a uniquely Shanghai problem, too, This all the solicitation. Like, that first night, I was walking around, you know, maybe 30 minutes before this story started, and I got approached at least 15, 20 times. So as this is happening, I'm starting to classify the different types of solicitors in my head um, as I want to do. So there's you, there's pimps, right, who come up to you and they're like, hey, I got some girls. Like, come check out my girls. They're showing you pictures. There are straight up prostitutes who are like, can I come up to your room or you want to, you know, come down to this alley with me? Then they've got a lot of just beggars and panhandlers just asking for money, begging for food. That's the third type. The fourth type is what I was calling the get you whatever you need guy. Sometimes a girl too. This would be yeah. the guy who's like, "Hey, I'll get you whatever you want." Like, well, you know, what do you want? Girls, drugs, you know, beer. Like, you just tell me, I'll help you get it. And like, because of the language barrier for the get whatever you need guy, you know, he presents it like he's offering you a service. He'll be your translator. He'll make sure you don't get duped. But the reality is, you are getting duped. And the fifth type of person who approaches you, well, that's what this story is about. <laughs> Thank you. 
next time on the KP Watershed channel. I'm seriously getting approached by people every three steps I take, and they would be relentless. They wouldn't leave me alone. You know, come on, come on. You, you got to see these girls. Then one girl comes up to me, and she's different from all the rest. So she's like our age. She's dressed in a much more westernized way. Like she's got a t-shirt, she's got jeans, Converse sneakers. We start walking together. Her name is Ling. 